Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Bridging the Gap with Byron. And Jack Johnny Angel Hunt. How's it going, man? I'll tell you what, man. Having some fun with you, brother. I'm having a great time, actually. In, in fact, this, uh, we're talking to young and old, which I think is really cool. Well, what's interesting is it's uh, triggering a lot of things that are making me think about my youth with yes. music. Yes, And uh, just kind of, there's a timeline thing. And I remember my life based off of the music I was listening to. Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I had a question for you, because I know some of your history. Tell me when you got into like actually playing professional. Uh -huh. Like I heard you did it kind of young. So tell me about that. I, I was playing at a young age, but professionally I started when I was 15. Oh wow! And uh, we, I started in a group called the Cordells, mm. which we later recorded. When we were like 15, 16 years old. Uh, we had a record out, and Mr. Lip, which is my partner's dad. Okay. He was the guy that pulled me off of more or less the street. I was a I was a North Side guy. Uh, you know, he was out the streets. <laughs> yeah, and, and I did my thing, you yeah. know. And uh, he actually was the guy that put me on the straight track. Good. You know. So he took us to his house. Uh, they moved their dining room furniture and uh, set us up. And we used to practice every day. I mean, every day. Mm. And then he got us our first gigs. He would cart our equipment. He took us up to Geneva on the lake. And we could, at 16 years old, we were playing with, we were across the street from the Jaggers who, Oh, about wow. to have a record out at that yeah. time, you know. Wow. So it was like, so I started at a very, very young age, and I loved it. And, and then I realized at that point that this was going to be my my life. Yeah. And it's like uh, w once you get bitten, it, it, it it's no, a wrap. No, Everything no, else kind of falls to the it, side, you know. And how about you? Uh, for me, I feel like I was a late bloomer in a lot of ways. I mean, the passion was there from the jump, very early. Yeah. Um, I got a guitar at fifteen. I kind of noodled around on it, but, um, you know, it was a skateboarder, so that was, like, more important at the time, <laughs> time-wise. And then sometime around, like, my early 20s, I just, you know, I got my first real, real guitar at that point that I paid for, and it yes. was, like, expensive. And it didn't matter if I was in a band. It didn't matter if I was going to be on stage. I knew I was going to be playing music the rest of my life, and I committed to that. So, like, if I had a little bit of money, I bought a metronome, or I bought, like, a harmonica, and I just started collecting instruments which is why, yeah. why my house looks pretty much like your <laughs> store now. Um, but it all came from like just that love and passion for music, you know. Absolutely. So what do you listen to? What do I today? I was listening to because I go back. I, go I know back you do. Before, I know you, you tend know. to go back. And, and, and I, I, I do a lot of the stuff from my era that I listen to faithfully. But I, I go back even further than that, like Nat King Cole and the Mills Brothers. That's what I really like to listen to to chill. Mm. But today, I pulled out one of my favorite bands. Record of the week. Let's see it. This is Tower of Power. All right. I, I don't have that one. Uh, Tell me about that I one. got them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that 70s? It looks like 70s. Art. Yeah. Which was great about these guys. This was their their second album. This is with What is Hip. Mm. And, okay. Uh, you know what I mean? Yep. And uh, it's kind of cool because I've seen them from when they first came out. And then I, I saw them later on, and I just recently saw them about uh, two years ago. Okay. And I got to meet one of my heroes, which is Garibaldi, the drummer. He's just wow. a killer drummer, man. It's like, got to spend some time with him and uh, him and Emilio and some of the cats, you know. So to get to pick their brain, and then I go back and I listen to their music, and it's it, like, it gives you a deeper understanding of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. crazy. Wow. And what's your, what do you listen to today? I've been jumping around a lot uh, in the last few weeks. A lot of times, you know, People ask me if I'm listening to new stuff. I do listen to a lot of new artists, but I, I've been going back to things I was listening to in like the 90s. Yes. And that, that were sort of transitional artists for me. So my record of the week is Bjork Post. Um, the reason why she stands out for me is because I was a super metalhead. So I was listening to all this like heavy stuff and I was just kind of getting bored with it, especially yeah. in the early 90s. It just wasn't hitting the same way. And so I started listening to all like strictly like female artists. I was listening to Sade and Tori Amos, and I got into Bjork through the Sugar Cubes. And there was something that stood out about her music for me that was like, she had a fearlessness that I, I connected to. So it yeah. was almost as powerful as metal, but in a totally different energy. Different venue. And I was trying to like bring that into my playing because like, yeah, I can like shred around, but then I didn't know how to like speak in a, in a softer tone yeah. and so listening to like records like this really helped me and, yeah, and also absolutely. to brought in some electronic elements um in no, my no. influence of what i was listening to so just trying to like branch out because i'm going in the studio in a few weeks and trying to be, <laughs> you know as nerdy as possible but uh it still shapes my youth yes you know and uh that sort of kept me on the path of you know got me to where i am today sitting across from you so <laughs> speaking of guys we have a guest coming up 
young guy. I, I can't wait to. I met him earlier, but I've got. To, I want to chat with him. He's a great talent. It's going yeah. to be a good one. That's what I'm hearing. All right. <laughs> Stay tuned. Jack. Jack in the box. Time once again for Jack in the box. It's Jack here, and today we're going to talk about the arcade games, especially this arcade game. I'm talking about Miss Pac-Man. See, back in the day when we wanted to play games, you had to go to the malls, you had to go to an arcade, you had to go to an amusement park to play all these beautiful games. Nowadays, what you do, you can get it on your phone, you can get it on your television, you can get it just about anywhere. But the arcade game was a thing that we did because it was a gathering point. Just like when we go to buy our records. You'd go to a record store to buy records and you'd sit around and play it and talk about it. Same thing with the arcade games. You would talk about a high score, who got the high score. And of course, Pac-Man eating all those little ghosts. It's the ginchiest thing. Oh, that's right, it's ginchy stuff. All right, everybody, welcome back to Bridging the Gap. Uh, we are so excited to have our next guest up. It's a young cat crushing it here in Pittsburgh. Everyone, welcome. Jossie and Blaze. Welcome Thank to the show, bud. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Thank you so much. So, we met a few months ago. We were on a show, it's a tribute show to Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in awesome musicians. And I remember one of the things that stood out was first, your talent, second, how young you were. So, um, at the time, you were 19. Did you even listen to Fleetwood Mac before that, or did that kind of I get did you have into a, it? I did have a little bit of an ear for Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. When did you know that you, you know, wanted to do music? I mean, when, when did you start? Um, so, before music, I was a football player, mm. and I was a wrestler. I like it. Uh, yeah. We're talking. He got hyped. Yeah. I was a monster, so I know what you mean. <laughs> That's also an interest of mine. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I was a football player. I was a wrestler. Um, I grew around adults all my life, mm -hmm. even growing up, and uh, my brothers are much older than me. So I always felt kind of dislocated from my peers, kind of like the similarities of things, because yeah. I was always so used to the older style the of things. Right. And um, so I found out that my grandfather's name was Elohio. He uh, lived in Puerto Rico on the, the poorer side in Yabacoa. He had this guitar, and he wasn't famous or anything, but he would go around the town. He learned by ear, so mm. he'd go around the town and play these songs, and people would actually follow him and sing along and dance. Sweet. And, wow. And, you know, he would do that from time to time. And when I heard that story, I automatically got inspired. Mm. I, I realized that I joined sports not necessarily because of the love of it, but because I wanted to have friends. Yeah. yeah. When I found this instrument, when I found this calling for music, I felt like I had something for myself yes. for once. Wow. Well, yes. um, did you know that you were going to pursue it professionally, or was it just a love interest based off of how you came up and like the backstory so, of the family. So yeah, it was it was basically um, I did go through some some deep waters, some obstacles that my my mom and I especially had to face growing up that really gave me a shift on what I wanted to do mm -hmm. with my life. Good for you. Yeah. So when I was in those deepest moments of my life, I remember this man. He told me, you know, when you're looking out deep into the abyss, you make a connection and you find who you are. And when I was at that point in my life. I found out that music was was the calling mm. and it wasn't necessarily as looking at it from a career standpoint it was music did this for me it yeah. helped me it made me grow it gave me a second chance at what I wanted to do maybe I could make music to do the same for others yeah so I started practicing I started songwriting just the form of the, exp the expression I'm sorry and just making it just work and that's just how it all became. Was um, guitar your first instrument? Is that your main? Yes, guitar is the main instrument. I kind of fiddle around with the piano. <laughs> yeah, but, you I know, fiddle around just from a production standpoint, Coach. I, I just wanted to tell you, you know, I, I can see some similarities here. I, I was a sports nut when I was young. I played football, baseball, box. They did all this stuff, right? But music, when it touched me, mm -hmm. it, 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 it did something inside. And um, I started at 15. Uh, our first record came out when I was 16. Wow. And, um, I, I was always with adult people, you know, 
there weren't many 15, 16 year olders putting records out at the time. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you're older, you know what I mean? And um, so, so it was, was hard for me to say, I was a street kid, so I was like, do I want to give up playing more sports or do I want to really get into music? And of exactly. course, my buddies are like, man, are you a musician? Are you kidding me? You know, yeah. <laughs> instead of, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was one of those kind of things. Absolutely. You know? So, uh, how was it for you? I mean, you started at a young age. So. It was, it was kind of, it was actually very similar. I, um, I started, my, my first EP came out at 16 years there old. There you go. And, wow. and, you know, my mother, she was very passionate when she was younger. She was a very phenomenal dancer. Nice. Fortunately, you know, she couldn't pursue that dream. Yeah. But she always invested it into my mind state, you know, reach for the stars. You know, if you're not yeah. reaching for the stars, you're not dreaming too yeah. big. And, um, that's why it, it, the constant thought of just being a successful artist, not only just doing that, but just doing music in general, the love of it, it's, yeah. it really helped me just guide me to where I want to go. So um, the EP, it's titled Just the Beginning. Nice. And I, I feel like, like that. that that was kind of the big picture of, you know, this is just the beginning of a, something that's going to last a lifetime for me. Well, speaking of the beginnings, I heard a story about a contest that you were involved in. Mm -hmm. It seems like... Uh, you can tell the details, but it seemed like a beginning for a new path with your career. Tell us a little bit about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So uh, around last April, I would say, um, I had the opportunity to be on 100.7 Star Pittsburgh Radio. Okay. Um, I was a part of the Bubba Show. Nice. And uh, shout out Bubba and Melanie Taylor. <laughs> and um, so basically I told my story of how I got invested with music, and uh, they played my song Most High on Rotation. Mm. Um, that got a little bit of listeners, and uh, Heather Abram from Pittsburgh Today Good Live. Good friend. <clears throat> she, uh, she heard about it, and she spoke about it on Pittsburgh Today Live, a part of KDKA. Nice. And um, a few months later, um, I had the opportunity to be in this contest called The Open Act, and basically you go through these rounds and people vote for you, and if you become number one through those rounds, you get to perform at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, wow. And open up for uh, <clears throat> bigger artists, such yeah. as, I believe it was Shawn Mendes and Doja Cat at the time. Huge. And um, I made it through the second round. Uh, I do thank everybody who uh, voted for me. But um, <laughs> I was a part of the, I got interviewed by Heather and we talked about the, uh, the open act and um, a lot of support, a lot of Pittsburgh support. Nice. That's great. So what's next for you? What's, what's the plan? Uh, so my plan right now is um, just working on the content of things. I'm going to start making and writing more music. Um, I'm definitely going to try to push an EP out there and just make a storyline of songs and hopefully after the EP and uh, gaining more Pittsburgh attention I want to try to make a full-length album. But when, when you're writing, let me ask you a question, as a writer and musician, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what gets you to the point where you have to express what's in here? Because people always say to me that oh, I'm a soul guy, right? And they'll say, what is soul? And I say, you can't explain soul to somebody. Right. It, it's a feeling you get when the music touches you ever so deeply. It becomes part of you. Absolutely. And and that's what I think that's what you songwriters do the same yes. thing. Am I right? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's um a lot of people ask me like what kind of techniques, what kind of things do I start out with when it yeah. comes to songwriting? And I say, Man, I just I let it flow. Yeah. It's you can't think too hard about it. And you know, music is such a universal language, yeah. it's a big form of expression where you're basically expressing yourself into art. Mm -hmm. So you can't really think too deep. You just have to go off the emotion and the power that you hold with it. And if you make that song, that's the song. Well, I like it because, you know, I got to meet you at the young age. You know, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm at the, the winner of my life, you know. So it's like yeah. watching you young cats come up and do things, it, it gives me hope. Because for a while there, I was afraid music was starting to lose its oomph. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And it was such a lull. And, and it wasn't, I didn't see a lot of original stuff coming out which right. I'm seeing now and that, yeah. that gives me hope for hope for you guys and for future man well thank you guys so much for having <laughs> me oh, thanks for being <laughs> on the show absolutely all right guys stay tuned we're going to hit them with some rapid fire questions in one moment welcome back and we're gonna hit some rapid fire right now right I'm gonna ask you the first question something old something old um so because of my relationship with the adults and just growing up, um, the youngest out of the group, uh, I do believe that a lot of people say that I'm an old soul. So I would say that, yeah, I like that. I'm an old soul. <laughs> uh, something new. Something new. Um, I'm slowly finding out who I really am when it comes to music. I'm finding uh, my certain style of music and what I want to become through the creation of it. Mm. Nice. Something treasured. Something treasured. Um, I have my grandfather's guitar that he played in Puerto Rico. And, uh, oh, well. <laughs> there actually, you go. a lot of the songs that I've made have came from that guitar. The oh, magic. Well. Yeah. Wow. And something true. Something true. Um, 
You know, especially with this career field, uh, one thing that is always set into my mind when it comes to doing new things that may be scary, I always remember this one quote that says, uh, let everything happen to you, beauty and terror, because no feeling is final. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. I love it, man. Oh, man. Thank you for being on the show. Thank we you guys for having me. Stick awesome. around, guys. Sounds good. We're going to have a quick performance, and uh, we'll be right back. I like it. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Byron's Bodega. This week, I decided to move away from records and guitars and stuff, and... Uh, Focus on an instrument that a lot of people probably don't know that I, I really play. Um, probably back in the 90s, I got deep into world music and my grandmother lived in New Mexico. So when I would travel um, to, to visit her, we would go around different like drum circles and stores that, you know, sold the African drums. This is the djembe drum. Um, not sure the animal rawhide or whatever that is there. Um, but this was a big influence in my musical growth because I was learning rhythm and it was translating into my guitar playing and being in New Mexico opened me up to a, a whole world of like world music from Indian flute music and Spanish music, just uh, things that weren't on the radio, just super cultural music. But this drum always reminds me of my grandmother because uh, even with the turquoise, she was uh, really good at trying to ex you know expose us to a lot of different things and she's like always keep your mind open. So this instrument kind of reminds me of her when I look at it and hear it. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Thank you Everybody, guys so Josh much. Josh and Blaze. Stay tuned for the next episode. See you next time. All right.